How's it going everybody? Today we're going to go over the 0 0.118 Home Assistant release. Uh, we're going to go over the front end changes and just a few of them. Um, there are of course a lot more that usually goes into the release than I cover in the video, but uh, be sure to check out the release notes which I will uh, post below and check out beta. Uh, beta came out yesterday and you'll be able to join beta um, very easily. Um, there's a Discord channel for it if you have any issues, and a lot of people will do it just to test it out and get a new glimpse of the new features before everyone else. Uh, now we can go ahead and get into it. Uh, the first change I want to highlight today is the new grid card, and this came from the Home Assistant creator himself, uh, Paulus. So the grid card is kind of like a combination of the vertical and horizontal cards, kind of. Uh, but basically what it does is it allows you to um, to add in cards into a grid-like style. For example, what you see here, go ahead and edit this, but basically all it is is just like a stack. It adds cards in, so it's, you know, you the type is grid, and then the next most important variable in the configuration is the cards variable, which you add in just like you add in currently for the vertical stack and the horizontal stack. But there are a few options that uh, allow you to do a little bit more with them. So right now I have the square option on. You can see that all of my button cards here are in a square. You can also see that not only does it roll, you know, put it out into rows, but it also puts it out. And if it goes, you know, if there's too many for that row, um, it will automatically create a new row and make that the same size as the rows above it. So um, it's a really cool card to make really clean um, interfaces. For example, I know a lot of people, there was a, almost like the Windows, um, almost like the Windows layout. I can't remember the, the other front end that people use, but um, this allows you to put in cards and make them all square and nice and neat on your front end. Um, so I think a lot of people are going to get a lot of use out of this card. Um, you're able to set up different variables. So uh, this one's just the regular grid card for buttons. I guess it automatically does it. But there's also a square option, which will um, force them to be squares. Um, and I believe there is more options to go with that. For example, you can see you can say how many columns you want in the card. So for example, if I want to change this to columns four. Now we have a four column grid and they're all the same, all the same size, um, nice and neat. This is kind of basically what a horizontal stack does, what you're seeing now, but it makes, this is the grid card I think is going to replace those cards because it is very nice. You can set it to one column and now it's a vertical stack. Um, you can set it to, you know, how many other columns you want and now it's a horizontal stack. Um, so I think this is a really cool, um, way to stack your cards now. So um, definitely check that one out. It'll be highlighted in the um, release notes of the on the blog really well. So um, that'll be there. The next card is one that I created and it's the new logbook card. So basically what this is is just the logbook panel input into a card. Um, and what you can do with this is you can add in entities that you want to track in the card. So for example, I'm tracking the ceiling fan, the living room fan, and the ceiling lights. And I'm able to say how many hours I want to track. And then it will show me any time that these change. So quick, see that just now my ceiling lights were turned off, right? So a lot of this card is able to take in as many entities as you want to track. So you can track all of your motion sensors, all of your um, your lights, all of your cameras, whatever um, you want to track in here, whatever hits the logbook, you're able to track in this card and set up the entities that you want to track. Um, I think uh, there's many custom cards that do this, but I think now that we have the core card, a lot of people are going to use this. I think it is very handy to see, you know, oh, my motion got tripped five minutes ago and it's been tripped seven times since then or something like that, you know. Um, the next card, so we're just going to keep going. The next card is the calendar card. So a few changes on this. Um, 
if we go to the edit dashboard here, um, there we have a list view. Now this list view before used to start at the beginning of the week. And for example, on Monday or Sunday and go to Saturday. And no matter what day you were on, it didn't change. But now it goes over the, it, it starts at today, it goes seven days into the future. So for example, today's November 12th, and the last day that I'm seeing is November 19th. So this is a little bit more useful. It's more like an, an agenda view now, which I think is very nice. Um, another thing about the calendar, which is the calendar panel, is it now persists which calendars that you select and deselect. So for example, I'm going to unselect every one of these, refresh, and now you can see that it persists throughout my refresh. It persists throughout logging out and logging back in. Uh, maybe it doesn't do that. It persisted in the local storage of your browser. So basically, if you go to a different device, it's not going to be the same. But if you're on this device and you are, you know, you, you deselect any of these, it's going to hold those in your storage of the browser. So it won't go away if you refresh the page. Um, the next changes. Um, so if any, if you haven't heard of the new quick bar. Um, it's really cool. Uh, Donka actually added some new features to it. So if you hit C on any place in the Home Assistant dashboard, it'll bring you up to this commands list. And he added the ability to navigate to different parts of the Home Assistant UI. So for example, I can navigate to the logbook easily. All I have to do is hit C, and then I can choose from all these options. I can also say, take me to the media browser. Type that in. And it automatically takes me to the media browser. Um, so that's super cool. Next, we have the header and footer editor. So this is a really cool one that I added. I think a lot of people are not seeing these changes or seeing these header and footer options. But now you can you can see this new option called header. It'll be none if you don't have any. You can click add. We have a graph header, a buttons header, and a picture header. So for example, if I hit picture, this is automatically going to be, it's going to add a picture to the top. So this is the default image. It's going to add a picture to the top of my entities card. Now let's see, I want a graph for my brightness, right? So now on this entities card, I have a header, which is an image and a footer, which is a graph. So now I'm able to edit for example, this graph card in the UI. Um, the graph card is the only one that has an actual editor right now. I'm going to add the other ones later. But right now, you can you can now edit that footer and that header right in the UI, just as you can do the new um, the entity rows. So it's just adding on to the entities card editor. Um, I think this is really a good feature that a lot of people may not know about the header and footer. So I think this is going to bring it to light and have a lot of people use it. Um, if you find any cool ways to use it, let me know in the comments. Let's see. So the next one we have is you're now able to supply last updated to the secondary information of an entity row. So um, it's not just entity ID and last changed. It's now last updated, which is a little bit different than last changed. So for example, uh, if it hasn't changed, but the sensor updated, you know that um, instead of saying the last time it changed was an hour ago, it's like, okay, well, has it checked since that hour? Now I know that this random sensor is 15 nums now. It's not 15 nums an hour ago, and I don't know what it is now. I know that the last time it updated, the last time I know the for sure value is, you know, five minutes ago or 10 minutes ago or something like that, you know? Um, so that just gives you like, a little bit more of a peace of mind of I know that this is the correct value of this uh, of this sensor of or of this entity. Cool. Um, so let's keep on going. Um, the next one that I can't really give you a, a visual because I'm on Windows. Uh, this is my dev instance, so it doesn't work. Is there is a new date picker for the entities card? Before it was a really crappy. Uh, manual process to do like a date. It didn't really look good, but Thomas Levin actually created a 
or added in a new one. So this is the new date picker. It looks really nice. It has all the options directly on the page or on the element itself. Um, so you can um, easily pick your date in the date picker. Um, this is only for the entities card that this changed. Uh, a lot of the other date pickers already have this enabled, but uh, this one was kind of lacking. So I'm really glad you did that. It looks really nice. Um, let's see, the next one is you're able to duplicate a script. So let's go to my scripts here. I don't have any, let's create one. Script, description, sound, okay. Healing lights, and we'll turn them on, cool. So now I have this option up at the top right to duplicate the script, and now it's duplicated. Easy, just as you, we added to, or somebody added to the automations. Um, so it's just a added feature that was in the automations before, and now added to scripts. Um, let's see, other than that, um, you may have seen that um, there have been a few updates to the fobs. These are called fobs, basically like floating buttons. Um, but instead of just being a plus sign, um, they're now plus sign plus whatever the action is. Um, so that's in most of the UI. Uh, I think they've been all changed to that, which looks super clean now. I think it, uh, you know, just the button, you didn't really know what you were doing. Um, at least new people maybe, but now it's a lot easier. Um, so other than that, I think that's really it. Um, another 10 minute video, 10 plus minute video. Sorry about that, but uh, there is a lot to go over. Uh, I'm going to add in little sections to the, to the YouTube description so you can kind of skip through to see the ones that you want. But other than that, um, that's it that I'm going to talk about in the front end. There's a lot more changes um, that happened. For example, let's go over them back. There was one I wanted to talk about. The attribute names are now user friendly. They, you know, it's just not the straight up name of the attribute. It makes it a lot uh, easier to read. Um, there's just a lot of stuff that came into this release that you're gonna be able to see in the release notes. So I'll, I'll link everything below. Uh, but I hope you guys liked the video. Um, if you did like the video, make sure to subscribe. I'm almost to a thousand. I think we're at like 800 right now, um, which is super cool. And, uh, I appreciate it. I uh, hope you like these videos. I know they go long sometimes, but overall, I think they're, they're really nice. Thank you guys.